Yo, what's going down? This is Dub FX. I am super excited to be doing this video. I will be showcasing a brand new looping app called Loopy Pro by A Tasty Pixel. This is now my new loop station. I am not going back to the RC505. Um, I'm not even going to attempt the MK2. This is the next level thing that I've been dreaming of for the longest time. And once I get into showing you how it all works, I think you will definitely agree. So uh, without further ado, let's do this. Pew. That's right, step on my trip just, step in my trip man, my trip just, just step on this trip man, step on my trip just, step on my trip man, step on my trip just, just step on my trip right so confused, abused, overused of these walking shoes, and never turn back cause I know this score, I'll never be used what I do before but it's too late, my fate every year to take, what did I say, listen up don't miss the floor but just pick it up now off the floor and guess who, yeah you, you the ones that I'm talking to, never gonna guess what's coming next to you, might it's about to manifest, but inside this rhyme, you will find my mind. Just sit my crazy lip in, just sit on my trip, just step in my trip, just just step in my trip, man. Step on my trip, just just step in this trip, man. Step on my trip, just step in my trip, man. Step on my trip, just just step on my trip, right? So step on my trip, just step on this trip, man. My trip, just just step in my trip, man. Step on my trip, just step in my trip, man. Just step on this trip just step on this trip right so and what did my mother i see flow out of me easily so easily that my mind is free to blaze your mind but my fantasy when i get on this mic i'm probably so awfully tight overly tight that my rhymes are like that cloth i take it it's ready to strike now when i get on the street creating a brand new beat feel free to come up and meet me don't be shy you could never distract me when negative vibes attack me get into my mind and hack me but like like nothing's happening oh, there ain't no way to stop my trip just my trip man, my trip just, sip on this trip man, sip in my trip just, sip in my trip man, sip on my trip just, alright, alright, so.
Okay. Check it. Check this out right now. Hey. 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 What the hell is going on? I am so excited right now. Guys, this is the brand new Loopy Pro. This is my new loop station. I am never going back. This is now what I'll be using forever. To give you a quick demonstration of what I just did, how I just did it, and I'm going to go deep, so buckle up. Okay, so first you saw me make the beat, and it was like this. Then I also used retrospective recording, which means rather than loop pressing a button, making a sound, hitting the button again, and that becoming the loop, retrospective recording is when it's always listening, and you decide how much it's always listening for, whether that's a bar, a beat, four bars, whatever you want, and you just do whatever you want, and then when you're like, ooh, that was cool, hit the button, and it's looped what you were doing before that, as opposed to what you're doing from that point if that makes sense. So I made this beat with the retrospective recording, which is like this. And then back to them. Now I also put a reverb on the, using the send effect, and I'm gonna go through all of that in a minute. And just the reason, ah, oh, I just erased the beat. Let's see if I can, yep, back. So another cool thing, and I'm gonna go into the mix and explain it all a bit later, but check this out. So I've got a, no, I don't want to delete it. I've got a transient designer on the beat. So if I play that, let's take the reverb off. Now listen to the difference with and now with that. That's how it would have sounded with a transient designer. How tight is that? And you can go crazy with this. I mean, how tight that is in comparison to. So you can make your drums sound as insanely tight as well. I don't want too much because I do want to retain some of that feel. But yeah, that's how I normally have it as opposed to that. So that's just amazing. So that's the beat. That's how I made the beat. Then I did some hi-hat sounds. So let's, this one here. Now, you're probably not going to hear it that much but because it's already a delay on this hi-hat sound, the way I used... The, the sound that I use always had delay on it, but I added more delay, which just gives a little bit more movement in the top end. Put them both sends on together, and now I'm gonna take them off. Huge difference. So that is the drums, those are the hi-hats. Then I went on and made some harmony sounds. So let's play, let's just stop all of the clips and just play that one. Nothing unusual there. Um, that's just usual me building up a few sounds and putting it all together. I can also add this, which is not a sound effect, it's an insert, which I've got the wetness knob. It's like a phaser and that's, Bound, this knob is bound to the wetness of that phaser, just for that extra texture if I feel like doing that. And then what I did was I actually recorded that loop into the loop next to it and made this sound. Just by playing with the fader and with the drums. Super cool, super fun. You can do lots of different routing and I'll go through all of that in a minute. Uh, what else we got? We've got the bass line. I mean, you've heard me make, if you know my music and see me live, you've heard me do all of these sounds before, but what's great is that I can, I used to only have two bass uh, channels. Now I've got two with six, with two with three loops on each. So I can go between that, this one. So those are those three bass lines. And then I've got this one. This one here. And now if you want to learn how I make all these bass sounds, I'm using the Helix FX pedal and also the 
what's it called? Future Impact bass synth pedal, which is insanity in itself. And I will do that another time. Right now I'm talking about the loop station. And as you can see, you can just go through all the different loops just by clicking on them. And then if you want to record on top of that, you just have to, once it's selected and it's playing, you just hit it again. And now see it's changed color, it's recording. So yeah, super dope. I also use the slicer. Now the slicer is connected to the drums. Um, so I've, it's, the slicer is a widget. That's why it's gray. And I'll go through widgets as well. But to put it simply, I've connected this widget to that drum to or to that clip anything that i record onto this orange clip up the top which is also this one here will then be sliced up in transients like this super fun lots of fun and then i also have one shots and those record those hey, 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 hey. oops let's uh they are set up so that they only work with threshold, which is great. You press the button, it's waiting. You make a sound. Right now, my mic's muted, but if I unmute it and I go, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You could do that with beatbox sounds. So there you go. That's the one shots. Then what I did was I also used um, effects. So let's go into some more effects. You saw that I used the sound effects on the drums. On this channel here, I have a sort of like a distortion with a high pass and a bit of modulation. Can't remember what. Um, running through a send effect. So when I play this sound here, if I turn the knob, just gets a bit more angry, come, cuts through the mix a bit more as opposed to that. So with the drums, so there's that. And then I've also got a low pass filter, which is something that I've been using since day one of looping with the RC505. And that is end up sounding like, let's just play them all. And just to blow your mind a little bit more, if you are a producer and you already use FabFilter, this low pass filter is FabFilter. The FabFilter plugins are in the iPad. So. so that's super dope. Okay, so we've got the Transient Designer, we've got FabFilter, we've also got DubStation. If you've you used DubStation before, this is something that I use in pretty much every track that I record in Cubase. So it's an amazing delay and you can do so many things. Uh, and I could spend time going through every single plugin, but there's no point there. What you, all you need to know is they are called AUV3, not VSTs. So if you want to start buying AUV3, some of them are free, some of them you pay for. Uh, you just type in AUV3 limiter and it'll all pop up in the app store and you can buy a limiter. The Loopy Pro already comes with a bunch of effects, not heaps, but enough to get you started. It's got some EQ, it's got some compression, it's got a reverb, it doesn't have a delay yet, it doesn't have a transient designer, uh, transient designer, doesn't have a transient designer. But again, it's all very cheap to buy. You can buy them and uh, yeah. So another thing that I also used was the metronome. So the metronome is accessed on the APC 40 MK2 by hitting the metronome button. So it just flashes the screen and you've got to click. I have it set to this Q volume so I can just take the volume out if I want to. Now, obviously you can hear the click and you would never want the audience to hear the click. But for the purpose of this video, I've routed it to the main out, but I could route it to a completely different output that only my headphones would be getting. So that's the click and yeah, you can also change the tempo of the track. The tempo um, algorithm is pretty amazing. So where are we at? 155 BPM. So if I play this back, check this out. Takes like a few, a second or two to catch up. But that's amazing. I've gone down to 118 from 156. No other loop station can be that smooth when you go down. You should be getting alias aliasing and 
let's go even further. Let's see how far we can push it. Go down 100 BPM, 56 BPM less. Listen to the transients on those drums. And the bass is so smooth. That is insane. If you know what an RC505 sounds like when you drop it down, even by 4 or 5 BPM, that at 56 BPM less is still smoother. It's crazy. I've also asked the developer, Mike, I asked him if he could bind uh, the temp, the pitch to the BPM so that you can make it sound like you're slowing down a record or slowing down tape to get that sound. And he said, no problem, he'll put it in. Um, it's going to come out after the release, but it'll be in it probably by the time you watch this video. Let's just quickly talk about hardware as well. In order to use the iPad, you need to have one of these or one of these. Uh, you know, you can get them pretty cheap. I think I got this on Amazon for eight euros. Um, these are a little bit more expensive. They're made by Apple. The only difference is you also get a charging port. So you can charge the iPad with a normal, you know, charger for any phone or iPad in there. And then you run that into the uh, hub, which is what I've got here. As you can see, this is my USB hub. So the iPad is running into that, right? And then I've got all of these things over here. These, That one's running to my Helix pedal. That one's running to the uh, Allen and Heath. And this one's running to the APC40. And that's it. So it's really simple to hook up. And then there you go. You're Away you go. Away you go, man. Why should you use Loopy Pro as opposed to a hardware unit? Well, there are pros and cons to the whole thing. I could start with the cons. The first con is you need an iPad or a phone to do it, but most people have iPads and phones. And if you don't, you can pick one up secondhand because it's actually quite a light load. The pro It's really not that hard to run. I mean, my project is running at 16% right now. Um, and I've got a lot of plugins going on it. And this isn't a particularly new iPad. This is an iPad third gener iPad Air third generation. I think it's 2018 or 19. It's nothing. It's not a pro or anything like that. Um, so, but the a, a pro to that con of you having to need a, pro, a phone or an iPad is that anyone with an iPad can just download it and start using it straight away. And the 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 cost of this app is nothing compared to buying an actual loop station. So if you already have a device. Buying this is super cheap, but more on the con side, you definitely do need a interface if you want to make this run smoothly because obviously just doing it on your phone, it's kind of like a toy. Um, it doesn't really work. You wouldn't be able to use it professionally just using it like this on stage, right? You need to plug a microphone into it. You need to send the output to the sound man, blah, blah, blah. So you need an interface to make it run. You also need a controller if you want to use it. You don't have to use a controller. You could use your finger, but... Personally, on stage, I would never trust my fingers touching the iPad. I think that, you know, with sweat, we all know what it's like playing with a phone in the rain. It just doesn't work properly. So you just sweaty fingers. It's best not to do that. You need a controller. So those are the only real cons. You need controller, you need an interface, and you need devices to make it run. Um, and all of that will probably eventually set you back to the same as getting just a, a, a loop station like a Boss RC505 or something like that, if not more. But you end up with something far better and, you know, personally, I think it's worth it. Another amazing thing is all the plugins you can get for it. I mean, you can't, it's not just running plugins like, you know, compressors and reverbs. You can also run synths and VSTs and I'll go into that in a minute, but, well, not VSTs, but yeah, synths like a VSTi. So Moog, if you've got the Moog synthesizer app or the Korg drum machine app, you can run that all into Loopy. It hasn't got a MIDI sequencer yet, but that's coming very soon, which means your one shots, for example, could be linked to a MIDI sequencer and you can play them. You don't just have to record. You could record them into a, a loop as audio, but you could also record them into a sequencer as MIDI. Um, same goes with MIDI synths. You could have re MIDI notes already pre-recorded and then hit play and bang, there you go. So how am I running everything? Well, I have my microphone. That's plugged into my Line 6 Helix effects pedal at my feet, which you can see in this little box right there there i have a lot of patches preset which for my bass sounds for my beatbox sounds for my vocal effects sounds all of that stuff that runs into the interface which is a allen and heath q pack this is an incredible 
piece of kit. It is a live mixer. So it's got 16 analog inputs. Um, it's also got three stereo outputs, four mono outputs, and a master output, which would go to your front of house. So all those other outputs I was saying before, um, the three stereo and the four mono can be sent to anything, whether it's in-ears, whether it's monitors on stage. That's incredible. It also is an interface, so that's how I've connected it to the iPad. I've just got a USB cable coming out of the interface and into the iPad. On the iPad or in Loopy Pro, you can then decide where you send each color. So just I'll explain to you about the colors right now, but each clip is, uh, is a color. You can have as many colors as you want pretty much. It's not unlimited, but you can have a lot. Each color is, corresponds to a fader, as you can see. Um, and on each color, you can also set the effects. You've got pre-fader and post-fader inserts. You've got send effects. Um, you've also, and these are your send effects here. So you can have as many sends as you want and you can put layer with all kinds of different effects. As you can see here, there's, uh, this is the output section, the destination. So I've got my beatbox and my hi-hats, basically my drums running to um, three and four on the Allen and Heath. The harmonies are running to five and six, bass seven and eight, those extra green ones are nine and 10, and all my sends to 11 and 12. What does that mean? That means that when I play back the track, they are all going into separate channels on this interface. So if I have a sound man out the front, he can, he doesn't just have like the loops all as one big mix, like to, to, to play with the volume and EQ. He's got, he can control the volume of each channel that I send him. You can have every single sound running to a different channel and he has complete control over that. So if you want to turn your drums up, he or she, they want to turn up your drums or your bass or your harmonies, whatever they want to do, they can do that if you have an interface that allows that. So that's amazing. I just want to show you some, something else really cool. I've bound this session button to clear all loops. Pretty sweet, eh? So this is another really super cool feature that you can do. You, it's got a thing called auto loop detection. So say you're not very good at hitting the button in time with recording the beat. Some people just don't know how to do that. Some people don't want to learn how to do that. So what you can do now is this. Check this out. I'm just going to go. See how easy that was? I mean, normally you have to hit it at the right time and end it at the right time, but I just went. Forget about it. You don't need to learn. You don't need to learn how to loop. It just does it for you. Do you understand how crazy that is? Do you understand how crazy that is? That's insane. That is insane. I'm going to show you another project that I've got, which is super interesting that you might want to see. Um, let's set up this one here. Look how fast it is loading proje projects. Boom, done. Now, this is a track uh, that I will play in my set where I'm not going to be doing any looping, but I just want to play back all the different stems to my song. So, turn the metron off. So what I've done here is I've set it up so that when I hit this button here, scene launch buttons, it's gonna wait till that top row is done and it's gonna go straight into the next row. I'm walking through a world I fake paradise, a fake paradise now. See what I'm saying? And then here we go. Let me in a bit of room. And I've set up all my effects, so. Loop's gonna drop. Bang, into the next section. 
Super cool. Super fun. So you can just load up all your stems of another song if you want and just use it like a backing track machine, just like how you would with Ableton Live. So that is super great, super fun. And again, you've got, you can load it up with different effects. I've got transit designers, reverbs, delays, blah, 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 you name it. Um, I'll show you another cool thing. I have this microphone set up in channel 16 on the Allen and Heath. And as you can hear, I've got a delay on this microphone and that is controlled with a send. So I'm not actually running into, let me just double check. It shouldn't be anyway. So we've got channel 16. Yeah. I haven't got monitor on monitoring. If I turn monitoring on, on now, now you can, can hear you've got, got that double up of sound. We're not using monitoring because I can monitor from my interface. But even though the this what you can hear what you see here isn't coming into the eye. I mean it's coming into the eye, but it's not coming you're not hearing that. You're hearing it coming from the direct signal, just like you would if you got direct monitoring on in a um, in a door. But you could still use the send effect. So I can still bring this up. And that's a delay that's coming from dub station. And I've also got this one, which is an even longer delay. So when I play the track, check one, two. That's right now. So this could be my guest, my guest microphone. This would be my guest microphone, and this would be my normal microphone. Just, that's for me. That's for somebody else who wants to jump on stage with me. And the other great thing is anyone using this microphone can is routed in that's any anything that plugs into this interface can then be routed into loopy and be looped at any point. So I could have a bass player on stage. I could have why am I talking to that microphone? I could have a bass player on stage. I could have a drummer on stage, mic'd up and fed into this Alan Heath mixer. I could have whatever I want. Any musician, any vocalist on stage is going into my Alan Heath can then get routed directly into loopy and looped on stage. It is awesome what you can do with it. It's crazy. So that is running stems. Let's go through some more stuff. Let's start with a fresh project. So we do that by hitting this icon up the top here and we go new project. So when you load up loopy the very first time, this is the screen you're gonna see. Now it's got five different colors and two clips per color. It automatically binds itself to the APC40 or the Novation um, controllers as well. Uh, so as you can see, these colors have already lit up. That's basically showing you what you see on the screen. And with the mixer, let's close that for a second, it already binds the faders. So you can already use that directly. Now, you can add more clips if you want to. You just have to go here. You can add as many colors or many loops as you like. And then these other ones next to it are one shots. You can easily move them around the screen, put them wherever you want. Um, you can change the size of them by just dragging it and changing it around, blah, blah, blah. You can make it look however you like. If you want to change the colors, you can also do that. Um, you change the pencil, use the pencil icon. The grid screen is where you move things around. The paint bucket is where you change the colors. You can also add more colors. So I'm gonna add a purple and I'm gonna make my one shots purple. For example, I had another color and I could say I want um, these two to be light blue. And then you've also got this other third screen over here and that is how you bind things. So I could link these two together, for example, and I could link these ones together. And then once you click on that, you can decide you can have one loop at a time, which means that that's how I have it set up for my normal beatbox loop project. So if I make a baseline on this one, I can then make a baseline on that one, and then I can go between the two and they never play at the same time. But you can also have another option, which is all loops play and mute together. So they're basically intrinsically looped. So when you turn one on, the other one automatic, automatically turns on. And when you mute one, the other one automatically mute, etc. So that is what you can do. That's how you play with those. And you've also got, let's just show you some other things, and I'll go through this more in depth, but you've got this screen here, which is A, which is your main screen, but you can also add another screen and you can add more loops. In fact, on this screen, I'm gonna use the widgets and I'm gonna show you what they are and how they work. Okay, so 
we've got all these widgets here, okay? And then we've got screen A and screen B, right? So we go into this. Now, the widgets are for if you don't have a controller. So say, as you saw before, I've linked different parameters to these knobs and faders, etc. You can do the same thing. So this right here would be a knob. You can just link that to something. You do that by hitting the pencil icon. You touch it and value change. Um, you choose what you want. So I'd say clip actions. If it's a clip that you want to do something to, then you tap to select the clip you want. So a specific clip. Um, let's go over here. Say I want this clip to be the target. Now um, I go back in here and say the parameter I want to adjust is the, well, the only ones I have available right now are, let's say the pitch, for example, create new action, boom, done. Now I'm going to be changing the pitch of that loop there. So you've got a fader here going left to right. Um, you've got a button. That button can be sent to anything. You've got an XY pad and you've got the slicer as you saw me using before. That slicer can have many different looks to it, meaning it'll slice up in as many different sort of slices as you like. If you've got a really long loop, for example, you might want that one. If you've, and you can use loads. You can slice up lots of different. If you want to just have a minimal amount of slices, you can use that one. Um, and again, you can always shape them and change them around and move them, like move them around, make them bigger, oops, make it bigger, whatever you want to do, boom, super fun, super easy to do. Here's a really cool thing, right, you can do, so let's say I'm going to set up my microphone, which is coming in on channels one and two, so my hardware input, I want it to be set to channels one and two, yo, one, two, now, if I didn't want to use the controller, I can use the screen, now, rather than tapping the screen and then tapping it again, to set the loop, you can actually do this thing where you hold the screen and when you release, it'll start recording. And when you and then you put your finger on again and release again and it stops recording. It's much easier to get a tight loop. So if I just go tung, to cat tung, to tung, cat tung. And it's not coming out because I haven't set the output. So I go here, set the output to cat and four. Tung. So let's just do it again. So I can swipe down and hit clear, or I'll show you another way in a second. So if I just go, right? I can do a long swipe, and it also deletes. Super cool. Now you can set these clips to record in so many different ways. Okay, so let's swipe up, and you get all the different functions of how your clip can work okay so you can set a length by dragging your finger along that you could have it two beats three beats one bar eight bars whatever you want it to be i have it unset because i like to choose in the moment how long my loops go for you've got the volume you've got the balance meaning the panning left and right you've got the pitch you've got the speed you can actually change the speed of your beat individually like each clip can be changed individually amazing uh phase locked that means that they will be locked to each other. So yeah, if you make one beat, you make a beat that's if you make a beat and then you want to have another loop that's also linked to that loop as far as being in time with it, that's why you want you want phase locked on. Free means that they'll all just be all over the place and each loop will have its own length and they will go in and out of time with each other and create syncopation, which is cool as well for other things. Then you've got playback settings. Playback settings is how the loop plays back, obviously. Um, now, you could have it set, the quantization set to loop. If you press play on a loop and you have another loop and they're rolling together, when you press stop on one loop, it'll wait to the end of the cycle before it stops. And then when you press play, it'll wait till the cycle starts up again and then plays. That's when it's set to loop. Master is the same thing, but it's talking, it's the master clock, not the first loop that you record custom is you know however long you want to wait before it comes in and none which is what i like to have it set to is instant so if you stop a clip and then you start the clip it'll just start as soon as you hit the as soon as you touch it it'll just come in when you want it to which is how i like to have it now hold to play very explanatory you have to hold it down if you want it to play fade in fade out explanatory you can make the loops fade in and fade out record if empty again self-explanatory now the record settings now you got some really cool stuff in here retrospective recording 
Um, that is what I was talking about before, which means that it's listening and it only loops what you had already done once you press the button. Now I could go through every single one of these things and there's going to be, there's going to be other people that do that. So I'm just going to speed through this and just show you the things that I think are really cool. Count in, count out, quantization, length quantization. You got audio threshold recording. Now you could do that, which means that when you, you rather than hitting record, with your finger and then making a sound you could just start doing something with you start beatboxing for example and it'll hear that incoming signal and start the loop recording you'll still have to press it again if you want to engage the loop but that's also a really tight way of doing it. you set the threshold right there um, record intro and record tail that is super dope so if record intro is sort of like retrospective recording except it you still hit the button to start the loop but it's listening from before. So say you want to do an anacrusis, which is what we call it in music language. An anacrusis is something that happens just before the song starts or before the one. So beat one. So say like in reggae music, there's always a vrak daka and then the beat comes in, right? So you could do that. You go vrak daka boom and like vrak daka boom right? When you hit that, it'll have recorded that vrak daka. When you press stop on all your loops, and press play again, it'll play that rakataka and then go back in your loops, which is super dope. And you could choose, set the length of that intro, etc. Record tail is the same thing. So say you do a beat where you go boom, boom, and you have a huge reverb. If you engage the re the 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 loop on that, you won't get that because it'll go boom, boom, it goes straight into the one again. But when you hit stop. At the, it'll wait for the end of the loop and right at the end of the loop it'll then go and play the tail when you press stop so it'll never play back that tail unless you hit stop and then it'll just do the outro so that's super cool simultaneous recording meaning you can record guitar and vocals at the same time or keys and guitar whatever it is if you've got like five hands five arms global clip settings now this will take you to a different screen which is global slip planning so you can set the global clip settings for all of your loops, set them all a particular way, and then go in and tweak one or two clips or three or four, whatever you have, however many you want, to be specifically different. That's how I did it. So I set up my global settings on everything, made them all the same, and then I went in and I said, okay, I want this guy to be uh, retrospective recording. I want this one to be um, threshold recording, and that's it. For example, that's how I set it up. So you can go in here and there's so many more. Um, I mean, it's all the things that I already talked about. You can set the outputs, blah, blah, blah. Last of all on the list, which is also in the same screen over here, is follow actions or orange group settings. Okay, so because this clip belongs to orange, you can also go in and you could say all the oranges ha um, clips have a particular way of recording or the yellow ones have a different style of recording. That's what orange settings are. And so you can, this just, just infinite what you can do with this thing. Okay, so that was the orange group settings. You've also got follow actions. Follow actions is basically, as you'd expect, it's an action that happens after you've done something. So your imagination can run wild with that one. So for example... Say you set a follow action to be that when you record your first loop on this loop here, which would be this one up here, when you've engaged that loop, another loop on a different color might start recording automatically, for example. Or you might want it to be that when you engage that loop, an effect kicks in on that channel. You know what I mean? There's so, or there's so many different possibilities you could do. You could, I can't, I'm not even creative enough to come up with that one. I just like doing it all in the moment, but you might have find millions of reasons for that. Gestures is basically the same. Gestures is only really used for on screen stuff. So you can choose what double tap does, what swipes do. That's like a gesture, right? So you, the way you use your finger on the screen, I don't use gestures because I have a controller and I would never use an iPad live, but you might set it up to do that because you're doing it for something different. Maybe you're doing, um, maybe you're doing something, you know, in the background and you're not got sweaty fingers. Who knows? So yeah, that's what you can do with all the different cl clips and how you can make it work. Same goes with the one shots. You've also got a whole bunch of different options of how to use the one shots. 
I'll allow you to explore that on your own times. It's, it's pretty easy. It's very straightforward. It didn't take me very long to understand any of this stuff. So again, to explain one more time, so these colors here are going to a different, well, you can set where you want the destinations of the colors. You could have them all going to the same output. So in this case, they're all going to one and two, except for orange, which is three and four. In here on this screen, you've also got insert effects. So these are all my ones that I've bought or some of them are free. Um, and you could say, oh, I'll just put fuzz plus on that one. That is happening pre-fader. So um, the volume of the fader will not affect that plugin. But if I put it over here on post fader, it's a distortion, right? So when the fade is down, it won't be hitting the distortion. It won't be creating as many harmonics. It won't be as distorted. And as you bring the fader up, it'll get more distorted, right? Lots of cool things you can do with that. You've also got, again, the output section, and then you've got sends. So you just click on that, new bus. A new bus has been created over here. And that knob A corresponds to this one here, A. So I could say set an effect and put a... Let's put a pro fab filter reverb on that. Pro no, not a pro Q. Let's just hold it down. If you want to delete something, you just put your finger in it and hold it down. Um, pro R reverb. Boom. There's my reverb. Sending to send A. Now, the mix is 100% wet. You always On your sends, you always want to have your mix 100% wet, right? Because you're doubling up the channel. You're sending that audio not just to the output of to the mixer but also to an effects bus and that's what that is and then you can just control that now so that's already bound there see it's already moving now when you click on the color up the top right of the color you've also got more settings once again so you can change the name of it let's say orange is drums i always make drums orange personally um so now that color down the bottom you'll see it says drums what else can you do? You could go into color orange. You could change the color. Let's make the color light blue instead. Boom. Now it's a different color. Okay. Uh, you hit it again. You've got the volume of that. Does that change the color? Yep. That was basically the fader volume. So, oops, there we go. So I just changed that there. Um, the balance left and right, pitch, speed of that entire channel, playback settings of that entire channel, record settings. It's all the same stuff. You start to realize that as complicated as it may seem, it's all actually quite simple and intuitive to use, especially if you're already used to using uh, doors and things like that or loop stations. The master channel output, you've also got effects you can put onto that. If you want to put a limiter on your master output, you can do that. All right, another really dope thing you can do is you can add synths. So, for example, I can go into this, press this plus button, right? I can add as many hardware inputs as I want, as we've already talked about. But you can also go to add audio unit. Now, I've got this one here, which is a synthesizer. Oh, we had to, we got to organize the output send because one and two for me is always set to my microphone. But here we go. So I can go here. Whoa, that is so loud in my head. That destroyed my eardrums. Where is the volume? I need to turn it down. Let's just turn it down on the mixer then. Turn it right down there and then... See what's going on there? So now this and this synth can be routed into a loop and you can basically connect it to a, a hardware. You could get like a MIDI keyboard like this thing. I can't be bothered finding the cable to set it all up. But all you need to do is plug that straight into the hub and boom, that'll be working and play that synth back. So if you've got... Uh, a nice MIDI keyboard, and you download a bunch of AUV3 synths. There's Moog synths, there's Korg synths, there's all sorts of synths out there. You could play them into, you could plug them into your loop station, and away you go. What else can you do while we're on the screen here? You've also got this thing over here. Now that adjusts the volume of each clip individually. So you do have the fader volume of the color, but you've also got clip volume and balance so and by the way look at this right if you use your finger to turn up and down right you can go up and down like that but if you want to be really precise the further you go away from the loop the more intricate you can be see how this at the size of the um of whatever that thing is gets bigger and as you get closer it's smaller, so it's much faster to go up and down over here. It's slower and more intricate. So that's super cool. And you can also play with the balance by going left and right. 
set it center, etc. You could also just grab them all and do them all together. So if you want to reset it, you can just go down all the way down the bottom. They're all reset and then boom, they're all the same volume. So that's really good for if you're loading up stems. That's how I, that's what I use. Um, I throw in a bunch of stems. If you want to use stems, by the way, check this out. You just use this thing here. You just go press, do this, set it up on the side, open Dropbox. I've set up so far so that Dropbox has got all these stems in here for me. For example, say I want to load up my drums, grab it, drag it in. Boom. Now, those drums are there. And if I want to change the volume of that particular drum, it's done. It's changed. Now, let's make sure that the output is selected. Ooh, getting low battery here. Now, let's say I want, let's do this. We'll change, let's see what the output's routed to. Orange, we want it on three and four. Play it back. And there's no volume. There it is. So that's a loop that I've just dragged in. Super cool, huh? Super cool. So dragging in loops, as you can see, is really easy to do. Again, with the outputs, just in case I didn't cover this before, you just select here and you can choose whichever output you want. So this has got 32 uh, digital inputs so I could run it to any one of those 32 digital inputs again my microphone is plugged into one and two so I can never use one and two but I can set them to any of the other ones if I want to now MIDI binding um, let's just say for example that I wanted to organize a effect uh, let's do a send return we're gonna create a new bus and we're going to put a reverb on that where are the reverbs pro ah, let's put a reverb there now, say I wanted to bind this knob to that send. All I have to do is go to here, MIDI Learn, hit the knob, twiddle the knob that I want to use, and close it. And watch this. Boom. It's done. That's all it is. That's all you do. Binding stuff is that easy with MIDI Learn. You can also go a more complicated route where you can set more things up, and that's where you go into MIDI Control, and I'll show you that was here. See, I bound just orange send A. You could also do this and set another one, and say bind that one, that knob, and add an action to it, and you've got, you could go forever and look through all the different things you can do there. But you've got now. Loopy also has a sequencer, which is really cool. So you do access that by hitting here. Now, as you can see, each clip has its own channel. So I could hit record, uh, start a beat looping on, and when you see it, it'll, you'll see it record onto the channel that you're recording onto. Each clip will then be recorded, just like a door. You can then take all those clips and export them into your door and then create a new track out of it, which I will be using. So if I want to record my beatbox stuff, rather than just having a mixed down version coming straight out of the loop station, like oh, I've got every single clip individually on its own channel path and in the sequence that I did it live, plus it playing around with the... Um, with the loop station. So that is crazy. That is amazing what you can do with that. So as you can see, this thing is literally insane. There is so much more coming as well. I've asked for particular things. That's one of the great things about having a single developer working on this app that, you know, he listens to what people ask for and he will literally, you can hear my kids in the background, he will just implement stuff within reason obviously if you're asking for something ridiculous he won't do it but you know all the things that i've said hey i needed to do this he's like no worries and then 20 minutes later there's a new upload ready to go so he's constantly working on this you know mike is an incredible incredibly talented guy and uh yeah i think that this deserves a standing ovation i cannot wait to start using this on the road um, more things to come probably by the time you see this video um, it'll already be there but for example the ab um, fade up there's no implementation of that just yet but that is coming this really is next level and again if you pair it up with a decent interface and a good controller then the world is your looper trust me on that one anyway 
Thank you so much for watching. Send me your thoughts in the comments below. Please tell me what you thought. If you want me to do more of these videos, I can do a whole bunch more. I can just keep talking about this loop station. There's so many things that I could go into and dive into. I'd also like to do some stuff on the Line 6 Helix pedal and share with you how I program that and even go into the QPAC more in depth um, and talk more about my gear. I'm DubFX. You guys are wicked and I will see you guys in the street. Peace out.